Hello, it's Miss Nikki. What's your favorite subject at school? I love science. You know who else loves science? Cece. Today, I'm going to read you a book called Cece Loves Science. It is written by Kimberly Durting and Shelley R. Johannes and illustrated by Vosti Harrison. Let's get started. Cece loved to ask questions. Her mother said her first word was why. Her father said it was how. But her favorite question was what if. You would make a great scientist, Cece, said her teacher, Miss Curie because science is all about asking questions. Do fish ever get thirsty? Cece wanted to know. They do, said Miss Curie. Do hummingbirds really hum? The sounds come from their wings, said Miss Curie. What if we all jumped at the same time? Would the earth move? Good question, said Miss Curie. I think we should investigate. Miss Curie told Cece and her friends about famous scientists from history, such as Caroline Herschel, Thomas Edison, George Washington Carver, and Jane Goodall. She also introduced them to many different sciences. Geology is the study of the earth. Biology is the study of living things. Entomology is the study of insects. One day, Miss Curie told everyone to pair up. For our next project, I'd like you to pick a science you are curious about and come up with a question to investigate, she said. Cece and her best friend Isaac were a team. They both loved zoology, which is the study of animals. Now, they just needed to think of an interesting question. First, they brainstormed a bunch of ideas. Science is all about possibilities. Is a bear ticklish? Cece asked. Do we really want to find out? said Isaac. Do pigs know when they are smelly? Cece asked. Only a pig can answer that, Isaac said. Keep thinking, said Miss Curie. A scientist thinks outside the box and never, ever gives up. That night at dinner, Cece was explaining the project to her parents when her dog Einstein jumped up and started eating the food right off her plate. Einstein, down, said Cece's mother. Cece giggled. Her plate was licked clean except for the broccoli. Look what Einstein did, she said. I guess neither of you like your veggies, her dad said laughing. This observation gave Cece a great idea. Einstein could be their science project. Cece called Isaac. I've got it. Let's find out if dogs eat vegetables. Cool said Isaac. Cece couldn't wait to get started. The next day after school, Cece and Isaac headed straight to Cece's lab to work on their project. What do we do first? asked Isaac. Let's observe our subject, Cece said. Observation. Doggy treats guarantee 100% participation, said Cece. Excellent data, said Isaac. Isaac and Cece watched Einstein eat. They watched Einstein drink. They even watched Einstein sleep. Sometimes, science was all about waiting. And waiting. And waiting. For something really cool to happen. From our observations, we know Einstein loves to eat kibble and doggy treats, said Cece. 
Now we need to investigate our question, said Isaac. Do dogs eat vegetables? I already know Einstein doesn't like broccoli, said Cece. I don't either. Let's test some different veggies, said Isaac. It's experiment time, said Cece. Finally. Cece and Isaac tried carrots, beans, and cucumbers. Einstein turned up his nose at each one. What if we disguise the vegetables with bacon and ketchup? Isaac asked. This time, Einstein was interested. He ate the bacon and licked the ketchup off the vegetables. That means he likes bacon and ketchup, said Cece. What if we just mix vegetables with his kibble, asked Isaac. I bet he won't even know the difference, said Cece. Einstein ate all his kibble but left the vegetables in the bottom of his bowl. Einstein might not eat vegetables, but he sure is smart, said Cece. Cece gave Einstein a treat and rubbed his ears. Good boy, she said. She looked at Isaac and shrugged. Now what? We're supposed to interpret our data, said Isaac. Einstein definitely loves to eat, said Cece. He sure doesn't like broccoli, said Isaac. He doesn't like any vegetables, added Cece. Not even if we cover them in bacon and ketchup, said Isaac. I guess Einstein is a picky eater, said Cece. That night at dinner, Cece was so disappointed, she didn't even finish her dessert. Maybe I'm not a real scientist after all, she said. Our project was boring. I thought you asked a great question, her dad said. Einstein put his paws on the table and sniffed Cece's banana split. Einstein, Cece giggled, naughty puppy. Her mother laughed and pulled Einstein away. He may not eat veggies, she said, but he sure likes bananas. That's when Cece remembered something Miss Curie always said. Scientists think outside the box. What if we create a secret recipe using bananas? She asked. Cece and Isaac rushed home after school and mixed together carrots, beans, cucumbers, and bananas in a blender. Are those still veggies? asked Isaac. Yep, said Cece. They're just in a different form. Gross, Isaac said, wrinkling his nose. Cece poured the mixture into Einstein's bowl. How about a special smoothie, she asked, patting his head. At first, Einstein looked confused. He circled the bowl, he sniffed the bowl, then he got down on his belly and wagged his tail. And then he slurped down the entire thing. Look, he loves it, said Isaac. In science, not all results are totally predictable. Einstein does eat vegetables when we mix them with bananas, said Cece. That's when Cece made the most extraordinary observation of all. Science isn't just about asking questions. Real scientists have fun finding answers too. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Keep asking lots of questions, my young scientists, and I hope that you have fun figuring out the answers too.